Something interesting happened this week that uh, people are blown away about. Doesn't blow me away because I've been friends with the guy for fucking ever. And I can tell the guy's always played outside his own realm. And that's uh, Spotify bought the Joe Rogan podcast. And, you know, people been hitting me up, pros and cons. I don't know anything about the business and how it works and how it's going to affect it. <clears throat> I know that how Conor McGregor say, sells out Las Vegas. And, you know, Conor McGregor doesn't sell out the UFC. He sells out Las Vegas. Joe Rogan has the same effect on people. With his products, whatever he pushes. I mean, he can't pick a winner. Look at Bernie Sanders. He picked Bernie. Bernie almost killed himself. You know, <laughs> he can't go with his winners. He can't pick UFC fighters either. But he's fucking knowledgeable. He's smart as fuck. And he's interesting. He's got a great podcast. But the reason why that happened is simply because he's always thought outside the comedy box. And that's the greatest gift that I've gotten from him. That... When most people were doing these world tours, you never see fucking Joe doing world tours, nothing like that. He keeps everything simple. I have made my business plan part of how Joe. I watch what Joe's doing. I see what, uh, you know, Segura's doing. I see what all the guys that are better than me are doing. I see what Bill Burr is doing. And you take a little bit from each of their styles, you know, whether it be their podcast, their stand-up. I'm not saying to steal. You don't steal nothing. You look at what they're doing, it's working for them, and you copy that fucking business pattern. You know, I'm not saying Spotify is going to give me any money. Spotify don't even know who the fuck I am, and I don't want Spotify to know who the fuck I am. I just want you to know who the fuck I am, and that's all that matters to me. But it's just so weird how Joe has been working straight. Like, nobody just gives you anything, American people. Everybody thinks the bluebird that happens shows up at your door. Fucking Joe Rookie. Rogan, he's lucky. No, man. Joe goes down there five days a week. He does four podcasts a week. He works out five days a week. He writes. On the weekends, he's always got something with his girls. You know, it's a nonstop world for Joe. What Joe does in one day, you guys do in one week. It's the same with me. What I do in one morning, some people do in a fucking week. Because you put the fucking work in. It's When I, when I put that saying up years ago, keep showing up. It was a picture of Joe Rogan. He kept showing up. I have the utmost respect for Joe Rogan. And it started 20 years ago when he was on news radio, when he'd shoot all fucking day and then still go and get a $15 spot at 12 o'clock following fucking Paul Mooney or something like that. And I would sit there in awe and say, that's the point to get on a TV show. Why would you come down here? No, the point is to be the best stand up you can. And then he fucking started with the podcast. And I think people were doing it first. But he was doing it late, not on the road. And I remember me and Ari were real paranoid at first. We wouldn't smoke dope on the camera and stuff. We were really scared. But he had this idea 10, 11 years ago when nobody was thinking about it. And then when I almost quit comedy, he talked me into doing a podcast with Felicia. So he knew something was up. And I told the story about mugging a hooker, and here we are, fucking seven, eight years later, still podcasting. So there's something to it. I follow his lead on a lot of things. I follow his lead on a lot of things. I follow Bill Burr's lead on a lot of things. But don't ever forget, like, uh, since I started doing this podcast, and Leo tell you, I've seen podcasts come and go because people's expectations are not real. They're not, and this is with everything anymore. Somebody tries something, they get into it for four months, it's over. That's it. Uh, it was too hard. No. Nothing is going to be easy. What do you think? You're just going to walk on there and they're going to fucking pay you millions of dollars? No. You got to put the time in. That's why I've said since day one to people, punching in is very important. Punching in is doing anything that will make you better and sacrificing it. When your girlfriend calls you and says to you, oh, we're going to go over to... Mildred's and have some mimosas. Who gives a Frenchman's fuck? I want a mim what does a mimosa do to you? Nothing. It gives you a fucking headache. It's champagne with orange juice. You got to do 10 miles on the fucking treadmill the next day to burn off the sugar. No. I'm going to stay home and write comedy. Sacrifice. Joe has sacrificed ton. You know, he didn't just become the UFC announcer. Did you know that? Or did he just... They just called him at home one day and said, Joe, why should I be the announcer? 
He was doing news radio. He was a fan. He picked up the phone and he called Dana White and he offered to do it or do it for free. How many people are willing to do that? Are you? Would you do that right now at this time? Would you walk into a store tomorrow if your family needed food and go, I'm willing to work for free to show you how hard I work? Look at that deadbeat right there. I'll work that motherfucker by three. Could, would you do that? Do you have the fucking balls to do that? That's what I'm saying. He had the balls. He made the call. Now he's got the UFC paying him. He's got 20,000 people paying him. Now he's got Spotify paying him. But don't ever think at one point in his life that that kid even fucking sleeps. You know, when he did that uh, October, sober October, he put up his results. And if you look at his sleep, his sleeping is the worst thing he has. He sleeps like six hours a night. Every, you know why? Because he's always going. He's always thinking. He writes comedy. You know, so don't. It just didn't happen that Joe lucked out. They could have given it to Mark Marin. They could have given it to Bill Burr. They could have given that deal to a thousand other people. Well, not really. Kevin Hart, Gabriel is in the same realm, Whitney Cummings. But Rogan brings something extra with him. You know what that is? He has a voice. And that voice carries. See, there's certain people that do podcasts, and they do podcasts for, to, to let you hear what they want you to hear. I don't give a fuck what the fuck you hear from me. I'm going to tell you what I want to tell you, whether you like it or not. If you don't like it, move on. They're soft the fucking podcast. But this is a podcast of truth. Why well, tell you the fucking truth? It's Monday. What do you want to do? You want me to come in here with a bunch of bullshit stories on fucking Monday? No. I tell you the truth. This didn't happen to Joe overnight because he's Joe. This happened because it's... 30 years of grinding every day, asking questions. Hey, I'm telling you, there's times I put on one of his podcasts and he's got one of those crazy people on there. I don't want to watch that either. But for the most part, he's got a lot of great guests on there. And he gets to some of the best guests I've seen on there. Rhonda Patrick, the guy from fucking Aerosmith was great. Fucking uh, the guy from Sleep. The reason why I sleep as well as I do and I focus on it was because of that book. So by him getting this money from whatever, just, you know, don't sit there and say he's the luckiest guy in the world. And there's a second point I want to make to this story, too. Last couple of weeks, agents have been calling you, you know, offering you deals. These people want to lend you money to send you on the road and do all this shit. This just goes to show you how good Joe and his management team are. They work outside the box. Comedy is great, but comedy right now is being worked inside a box. This is what I don't agree with it. This is why I wasn't going on the road as everybody else. I don't like how it's worked. It's worked inside a box. People who work outside the box are enjoying it more. Joe works outside the box. He enjoys it more. That's why I copy his style. He works outside the box. I've been watching that for 20 years, the managing style of his manager. So in my mind, I'm my own fucking manager. I should be doing what he does, which I do. I look at things. You know, I'm an econ major. I, think, I don't have a degree for econ, but I got a fucking master's degree in street fucking math, and you're not going to beat me on that. You know what I'm saying? I know numbers, and, I, and you look at numbers, and it's just not working. A lot of you are going through a hard thing right now, and I'm telling you that this is the time to do what you've always wanted to do. Fuck what your wife thinks or your father or your uncle. You got laid off, you get unemployment, you want to play the tuba, this is the time. Go to a pawn shop, get a fucking tuba, COVID test it before you buy the fucking and start playing the tuba. Everybody has a dream. Go for your fucking dream. This is what this was for. This was not a fucking thing from China or Trump's fault. This was a sign to wake us up. To wake you up that you should be doing more. To wake us up that we could be doing a little better. We could be better people to our friends. We could be better friends to our friends. We could be better brothers to our brothers. We could be better sons. We could be better. There's so many things we, that I've gotten from this. You know, when this first started, like two weeks after this started, I saw a thing that said domestic violence is up. I love my wife. But there's some nights when I have anxiety, I just want to kick her like a mule some nights because... She sees I'm having anxiety and I'm fucking fading away into, you know, from 7.30 to 8, I have a rough time. So I try to breathe it out. And, like, I'll ask her a question just to deter her. And then she'll just go on with the story. 
And once the politics comes out, my anxiety goes up a different level. But you know what? I got to be honest with you guys. During this time, I've learned to love my wife a lot more. 